I've taken up the sport of indoor bouldering in the last couple of years. Like many sports, there's always one piece of equipment that requires periodic replacement, and in climbing, that would be the shoes. Luckily, I'm okay with lesser expensive models, but the fact that I've had to replace mine every six months makes me want to improve on its lifespan. I'll show you how I did this next. My shoes are not that pricey to begin with, but the idea of recycling them and not tossing them in the trash every six months really suits my personality of always trying to fix something if it's broken. For today's video, my version of resoling the shoe actually starts with a brand new pair of shoes to which I'll add rubber. I use new shoes because the shape of the sole is a lot flatter and stiffer, making it a lot easier to resole. I guess it's more like pre-cycling more than recycling, where I'm actually preventing the wear and tear of the original shoe as opposed to repairing shoes that are already worn down. As you can see here, I am using tire patches as the replacement sole. These are automotive tire patches though, not bicycle. They're a lot bigger and a lot thicker. Up front, I'd like to mention the patch feels a lot grippier by touch, but in use, it has slightly less traction than the Evolve Defy shoes I'm about to resole. That's fine for my needs, I only use these shoes half of the time on my endurance days, which includes either Easy Auto Belay or V0 Bouldering. By using these shoes half of the time, I use my regular non resold shoes half as much, which doubles their lifespan. If you're a climber, you've probably come across people who have multiple shoes for different climbing terrains. My reasoning for multiple shoes is strictly limiting wear and tear. I start by sanding the surface of the shoe to remove any residue and particles. I dry fit the patch on the shoe to get an idea of where it will be glued to the shoe. Because all patches usually have a thicker center and thinner edge, I'll glue the patch so the tip of the shoe is about one half inch to three quarters of an inch from the edge of the patch. This puts the thicker portion of the patch right over the edge of the shoe. Unless you do this a lot, it might be a good idea to mark on the shoe where the edge of the patch will sit on each shoe. I'm pretty generous with the glue, but be careful because vulcanizing glue is very thin and will begin dripping. I'll let the glue sit for 3 to 4 minutes to give it time to dry a little, but still be slightly wet. Then apply the patches as accurately as possible on the first attempt. Try not to remove the patch, since it will at the same time remove some of the glue. When weighing down the shoe for drying, I'll raise the heel up so the weight presses down on the toe better. I also like to use a cushion to be sure the contour of the glued surface is pressed on as evenly as possible. This is left to dry for 12 hours. It's been 12 hours and now that I know the patch won't easily peel off when handled, I can trim the edges flush with the shoe. A scissors works best for trimming the patch. On the first pass, I'll leave about 1 quarter inch of patch still protruding from the edge of the shoe. On the second pass, I'll cut the patch flush with the shoe edge. There were some rough spots left behind after trimming and I tried to use a razor blade to clean up the edge, but that didn't work so well. I found the best thing to do after trimming is to go over the edge with a 120 grit sanding block. Here's the completed resoling. The dotted line is the reinforcement layer of the patch which adds tensile strength to limit stretching. The solid line just below that is the layer where the patch is glued to the shoe. As you can see, the trim turned out okay. It'll get worn down even more once I start using the shoe at the gym, so I don't mind not having a perfect edge like the original sole of the shoe. This isn't the first time I've resold my climbing shoe, so something new I'm trying this time around is to add a smaller second patch on top of the first larger patch. The tip of the area around my big toe wears the quickest, so I thought I'd test a thicker resole in just that area. Leave a comment if you're curious about the results. I'm thinking there shouldn't be any negative effects, and it'll definitely extend the lifespan of the resole even more. After about a month to a month and a half of use, based on my usage of 3 hours a day, twice a week, the resole will wear down to the original sole. Before it begins to wear into the original sole is when I usually strip the old resole off and prep the shoe for a new resole. 
To remove the old resole in preparation for the new one, I'll peel it off with the help of a plier and some lacquer thinner. The lacquer thinner is squirted under the resole enough to soak it but not overflow it. It's a slow process, but squirting a small amount of lacquer thinner, pulling on the resole, then repeating this eventually separates the resole from the shoe. After the old resole is removed, I remove any loose hanging pieces of glue and resole using a sanding block. Sanding over the entire bottom surface of the shoe will break off all the loose pieces and leave behind residual patches of adhered glue. This is fine to leave since when the new resole is glued, the initial layer of glue will cover and smooth over all of the old glue, giving the new resole a smooth surface to attach to. Since the making of this video, some of my climbing habits have changed. I've recently started using these resoled shoes all the time. I've found that one benefit I like is that the sole of my shoes is always stiff because I never let the original sole wear through. Keep in mind, V2 is my usual limit with a rare V3 or V4 if it looks easy. I'm not an outdoor climber either. I've switched to the sport of indoor bouldering for exercise and have come to realize it's a great full body workout. I also like the catered environment of the gym with restrooms, a cafe, and the ease of watching many others climbing at many different skill levels. Well, I hope this video can help you with your climbing budget and even better yet, climbing. Leave any questions or comments you may have in the comment section down below. That's all I have for now, and I'll catch you in the next video.